All right, guys, I want to cover the installation of the CPS-1 InfiniKey. This is the um, standard version that would be used for um, most the most the games that have a battery like this, except for the Q Sound games. Um, the Q Sound games, I have a smaller version. I call this the Q Type because, as you can see, it's a little bit smaller and um, this fits into that plastic gray case on those other games better. So on this one, <clears throat> we have a Q5. If you don't know what Q5 is, I guess we'll keep it a little surprise until we get this thing working. So let's look at our, look at our chart here, Q5X. There's no special region suffix. So we've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Boop. And boop. All right, so our code set there. <clears throat> now, um, when I work on these, I like to minimize flex. Um, on the boards when I'm working on them. And when you start messing with the C board, oftentimes when you're trying to put it back in, you get a lot of flex on this B board and I just, I really don't like that. So what I'm going to do is um, separate those when I work on them. Um, I would normally power up the board to show you that there's nothing on the screen, but on CPS 1 it should just be a black screen when it dies so there's nothing exciting about showing you a black screen so <clears throat> first course of action is to remove the B board this board was recently acquired off of eBay and it's it's nice and clean um, it was sold as non-working um, but when I first received it, just to see what it would do, <clears throat> I powered it up, and my power supply was short-circuiting. And so, I did some digging, and I found, let's see if I can get this on camera, that right there. Those two leads were crossed, so it was a dead short on my 5-volt supply. So that's probably what originally caused the operator to stick this thing on the shelf and then eventually the battery died was just that simple issue. But now we have another issue and that's the battery. So I'm getting my thumb under here and just firmly but controlled pressure upward. If you get a little too crazy with it this thing's gonna partially come up and you're gonna bend these rear pins and it's it's not good so just just be gentle firm and gentle um, so I'm going to get this B board out of the way and we have um, the C board with the battery and so there are one and two leads that need to come out and as you can see those are kind of folded over so my thought is to get my stand in here my thought is to um, get my tweezers um, under those as I'm applying heat. So, kind of like, get this to focus, kind of like that, getting under there with some tweezers. And then I'll come in with my iron and apply some heat. These, um, these solder joints already look nice and clean, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about applying new solder to them. And bending this, bending this up carefully to get it as vertical as possible. Okay, so that one's pretty much done. And do the same on this one. Sorry for the camera glare. Get that solder nice and molten. Bend that lead up. Okay, so at this point. You could either get a solder sucker and suck the solder out and then the battery will just fall out. Or if you're lazy like me, 
<clears throat> at this point, since those terminals are vertical, we should just be able to um, kind of grab this battery from the back and then just by um, heating up the solder, it should just kind of pull through uh, by itself. So that rear side came through. Sorry, it's kind of tell, hard to tell from the camera, but so this one should come through as well. Okay, so there's our battery. And um, it is dead. I did check it with a voltmeter. And those holes could use some cleaning, but I'm not entirely worried about it. Um, the main reason I, I wanted to desolder instead of trying to clip those with um, some sort of clippers is it just scratches up the PCB and I, I don't like that so um, like to keep it as clean as it can so let me change my camera position here and then we will mate the um, InfiniKey with the Seaboard and as you can see there are um, keys on these male connectors and then on these original female connectors so that makes it takes some of the guesswork out of whether you've got it oriented correctly or not so I'm just applying again firm controlled pressure to both ends and you can tell it's seated when that key uh, gets close to the black there and you can see that they are relatively parallel so that's a good indicator that we're <clears throat> that we're all the way down with that key all the way up and um, parallel orientation there and then here's our B board all by itself off of the A board and I want to mate these so let's see if I can Get this on camera well. Again, there's there's more keys here on the bottom of this, so that really really helps. Come on, cooperate with me. Okay, back dropped in, front dropped in, and so I'm going to again apply. Some firm even pressure. Okay, that went down nicely. And as you can see, those are the InfiniKey is nice and um, parallel with this board. I don't know if I can see the key from this angle. Eh, not really. Let's see if I can get in there. Let's see that. Yeah, it's really hard with this lighting. But anyways, you can see that they're parallel and that the engagement is good. All right, so now I'm going to mate the um, B board back with the A board. And so we want to make sure that we get these aligned and whenever you're getting <clears throat> a board that you've never inspected it's good when you take them apart to um, double check the the pins because I've had some boards that when I separated the a B or C boards that there was a pin somewhere in there that was bent from when somebody had separated it and bent it when they reattached them. So just a good good thing to check before you put things back together is that all those original pins are aligned. All right, so with the tailwind, this thing might work. Apply some power. Hello? Is it going to work? Hey, there it is. It's probably my, uh, my laggy video converter that's taken a while. So we got some scrolling stuff. What is this game? Do you know? 
We'll put in a coin. Cut to the chase. Dun, 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 dun. It's so adventurous. What is it? It's Capcom World 2. So, I'm a little surprised this didn't come with the plastic case, because I think in Japan, which this is the Japanese version, it did come with a plastic case. But, uh, hey, it works, though. And I got a good deal on it. So, uh, next video, I'll be covering uh, CPS 1.5. And at some point, I'll do... Let me turn this off. At some point, I'll do another video showing some of the extended... If I can do this without breaking things. It'll show some of the extended capabilities of this board. This is kind of difficult to do one-handed, but I think we can do it. I need your applause. All right. <clears throat> this has some extended capability with um, using one of these battery C boards and making this behave like a non-battery board. So you can actually make this board behave like any of these um, by setting the dip switches appropriately. So this is no battery. So you can be a B1 all the way through B21. And um, I'll do a demo of that, it's kind of cool. So that concludes the CPS1 video. Thanks for watching.